Today we get to talk about the image of the cat-headed goddess or the lion-headed god or goddess that we see represented in a lot of different cultures around the world. It's very powerful imagery and it has endured cultures and hundreds of thousands of years that we've seen representations of beings who were gods, goddesses, deities, uh, Neturu, whatever they fit under, this representation of a cat head was extremely important. And ancient comedic gods and goddesses usually wore masks in the shape of birds, if we look at what we see traditionally, and also cats or lions. And most of these masks were metaphors for either creation, destruction, or rebirth. In ancient Kemetic mythology, we see the lion or cat goddess representing primarily creation. And we see the lioness, we see the sphinx, who was her male car counterpart, the Leo. And these were supposedly beings that were empowered during the age of Leo, which is approximately 13,000 years ago. So the cat goddesses are some of the more popular goddesses of today and evoke something about uh, the grace and movements of the feline, but also its power. And obviously these are people who come from the desert, so the presence of predatory cats was very prevalent. So the first goddess that we come to is the goddess Bast, and she is a goddess and protector of cats, women, and children. She is goddess of the sunrise, and her goddess duties changed over time, but she is also known as a goddess of love, fertility, birth, music, and dance. Bastet is a cat-headed goddess, a local deity of the Delta, and cats were sacred to Bass as a symbol of passion. And Bass devotees celebrated their lady with processions of flower-laden barges and orgasmic ceremonies. Her festivals were extremely popular, and the spirit of this goddess lives on today through many representations of her. The goddess Mafdet was the goddess that prevails primarily over snakes and scorpions, and she is probably one of the earliest feline deities and was either a cheetah, a lynx, or oftentimes a leopard. She was described as having plated hair which was said to be the representation of the link bodies of the scorpions that she had killed. As of yet, we don't know a lot about Mafdet, not in the way that we know the other uh, deities, but her name is said to mean runner, which shows a strong link to the fastest of animals, that being the cheetah. The goddess Mutt, who we recently did a video, if you want to go through uh, through our library of videos, you should find that Mutt video. She is a widely worshipped mother goddess, and Mutt is, and she is yet another deity who can have a fully human form or a lion-headed headed form. She was the consort of Amun-Ra and the mother of the, of the moon god Kansu. And apart from being a cat or a lion, her other sacred animal was a vulture. The goddess Neith was the mother of the gods, and she is most often seen as a fully human woman, most of the time holding a bow and arrow, but she has a lion-headed aspect as well. Neith is a bit unusual in the sense that she is one of the few androgynous deities that has this type of representation, and she is supposedly self-generated, -gener having both male and female elements in her nature. The goddess Packhead is another lion goddess representation. She is virtually unknown in the shadow of Bast and Sekhmet, but she was a major goddess in her own right. As Bast's region was Lower Kemet and Sekhmet's region was Upper Kemet, Pakhet was worshipped in the middle region and had a temple which was cut out of solid rock near the modern day village of Ben Hassan in the eastern desert. And like Sekhmet, she was seen as something as a ferocious goddess, for her name means the terror or she who snatches. Among my favorite, of course, is the goddess Sekhmet, who is the lion-headed goddess of war and battle who represented or was venerated in the great city of Memphis. She is the power that protects the good and annihilates the wicked. Sekhmet is the wrathful aspect of the goddess Hathor, who is my patron goddess, who is the goddess of joy, music, dance, sexual love, pregnancy, and birth. With lion head, 
female human body and strength of her father, she is the noontime sun, intensifying blinding heat. Sekhmet is the triad goddess of Memphis with her consort Ptah, who is the god of arts, crafts, and creation, and Nefertum, her son, who was a deity represented with strength and truth. Ptah is a creative powder god who shaped the world and heavens and assisted by the seven wise working dwarves of, but Sekhmet in her representation of both the lion-headed goddess is a supreme warrior and was not only worshiped by people seeking protection, but also soldiers going into battle. They wanted to evoke that powerful essence of a goddess who could not be stopped. The goddess Tefnut, along with her brother Shu, were the first gods to be created by Atun Ra, and Tefna personified moisture, and Shu personified the sky. And they had two children, Gab the earth and Nut the sky. And in this way, air and moisture, earth and sky were created in that sequence. And once these elements came together, the physical world came into being. But Tefna has a representation all on her own, and which she is also represented by a lion-headed aspect. And she becomes more of a protector and a defender of the deity Ra. Now, like Sekhmet, Bass, and Hathor, she is one of the deities known as the Eye of Ra. These were the protectors of Ra and, in essence, the protectors of all existence. Two of the most sacred Hindu goddesses, Durga and Parvati, both share a connection with large cats. Durga... The feminine representation of positive energy of the universe rides a lion in a battle and often she is shown riding on the back of a, of a tiger. Shiva's wife is Parvati, the goddess of beauty and love who also mounts a tiger as she rides through the cosmos. Image of the cat goddess has endured for hundreds of thousands of years, perhaps even longer, and has been central to some of the founding civilizations and ideologies of mankind. So thank you for joining us as we talk about some of these cat deities. We'll go into further detail on the ones that we haven't done profiles on yet. But again, the cat goddess is all about power, but often represents either an attacker and in some cases a defender. Thank you again for stopping at Nine World Chronicles. Be sure to check out our website as we post most of the information from the videos and how these stories start to connect each other.